Hey guys, welcome back to the Cutting Edge Garage. Today I'm going to take you on a quick demo and walkthrough of the Texa Off-Highway software. Texa offers some of the most robust and complete coverage out of any off-highway off diagnostic tool. So let's dive in and take a look. Alright, so this is the first screen you'll be greeted with. Um, you'll select what kind of equipment that you're working on. So today I want to take a look at the agricultural vehicles. Alright, so starting on the left hand side of the screen. Um, first thing we have is the e-truck workshop. Now we do have uh, e-truck is Texas remote diagnostic system. It is uh, it's way more than like a like telematics or tracking or anything like that or fleet management. Um, it actually allows you to to diagnose vehicles like read codes, clear codes um, from from really anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. So say you have a piece of equipment down, um, say it's in like a stage three D rate. Because um, DPF clog, it needs it regeneration. Um, you need to force it with a scan tool. You can actually do that from the workshop portal um, anywhere in the world as long as you have a internet connection. You can read the codes, clear the codes, do the DPF and SCR resets, then force the regen from anywhere. So that is a really handy tool for um, keeping your equipment up and going. All right, the next thing we have on the list is off-highway standard protocol scan. That is like a generic scan. I um, probably won't be using that too much. Um, the only time we ever use that is if we need to get into a generic piece of equipment just to read the codes, and that's all we want to do is read the codes, clear the codes. Um, you won't find any additional functionality in there. Uh, it's just for read codes, clear codes, and see some live data. All right, next thing we have is the special code. Uh, special code, all that is, um, we call that a web lock. And basically, when you get your new text tool, there will be a web lock form in the box. All you do is fill that out, sign it, send it back to us. Um, basically, that is a waiver saying that if you use some of the very advanced features that the scan tool is capable of, you can actually damage a vehicle if you don't know what you're doing. And you, and you go in there to start mashing buttons and doing resets and changing, changing settings, and you don't know what you're doing. Um, that just means we're not liable for any damage you cause doing that. So how it used to work is uh, you used to always have to have an internet connection to use those advanced functions, but now they have moved to a token system. So basically every time you uh, connect to the internet, it's going to refresh these tokens. So now you can see I have five adjustments available. So I can make five adjustments without having uh, any internet connection at all. So that's enough to make five vehicle repairs out, out say you're way out in the field with no internet connection, then you can still do or you can still have access to all of those advanced features. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into a vehicle. Today, let's take a look at let's take a look at a John Deere. Um, John Deere does have the automatic VIN scan available, so you can just hit that orange button on the right hand side. It will automatically pull the VIN and identify the vehicle for you. Uh, today, we're just going to go through a demo. Um, this is worth It's worth noting that this is an actual recording from an actual vehicle they hooked up to. This isn't just like a simulation they made up on their computer. This is this is from an actual actual vehicle. All right, so after we made our vehicle selection, we're here uh, on the diagnostic screen. So starting from the left, we got our e-truck workshop portal shortcut there again. Um, we can go through our resets with the resetting. That's going to be for like your service reset, stuff like that. But then uh, we have the wiring diagrams. This is a really handy feature if you want to go straight into um, and check out your wiring diagrams. All you got to do is pick your, uh, pick your engine. And then you, can see, you guys can see we are right in here in the wiring diagram screen. Of course, you can just scroll by touch and drag or click and drag. And if you want to know what any of these components are, all you got to do is tap on it. And see that's a power steering pump relay. It even gives you a little location behind access steps. If you press the card button, um, what it's going to do is just going to give you a generic che check sheet for this one on relays, Oper operating principle, how they work, theory and operation. Always good to know for the components that you're trying to diagnose. All right, so next on the list is our technical data sheets. This is just a really handy repository of data and information you need to, uh, to make your diagnosis. So let's take a look at our ECU here. And this is just going to give you, it can give you like TSB warnings, stuff like that. And this one is just about using the correct type of def fluid or add blue fluid in the vehicle. Our next icon is our special code, same as before. But what's really neat, we can go to technical data and checks. We'll jump into mechanical data. You can just pick your model of tractor that you're on. And now we have a ton of information available at our fingertips right on our scan tool that we can use to help us in our diagnosis. So first is just identification um, that can uh, 
show you, you know, your cylinder layout. If you need help identifying a cylinder. Um, really handy is having all your tightening torques for all your engine parts that are all right here with sequences. Really handy thing to have so you don't have to leave your leave your uh, workstation, go to another computer, pull up your diagnostic, or pull up your uh, repair information. Under checks and adjustment, um, shows you all your clearances, valve clearances, cylinder wall clearances, ring clearances for the engine. All right, the last thing we have over here on the left is the customer management screen. That's just going to save your diagnosis under uh, a customer name, um, so you can go back and reference it, again, reference it again if, say, that vehicle comes back in, you don't remember what you did to it last time, um, you can just go back here and check and see. All right, so in self-diagnosis, first thing we see is our total global scan. Now, that's going to ping every module in the vehicle, um, tell us uh, if we have communication, um, it's going to tell us if we have trouble codes in there and what those trouble codes are. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Go to demo diagnosis. Once our ignition to be on, it's going to go ahead and scan. All right. So see, we've got a lot of colors here on the left-hand side. The red X, that means we don't have communication with that module, which generally means that module is just not equipped to this vehicle. But if you see this yellow triangle, that means that we have uh, trouble codes present in those modules that we are communicating with. And if it's green, that means we have communication and no trouble codes. So let's take a look at what trouble codes we have. Um, I usually like to just, you can expand one at a time. Or, I like to just hit this button on the bottom right, that will expand all of our modules that we're talking to and show you all of the trouble codes that we have. We can scroll through. If you want to go into a module and do a more in-depth diagnosis, all you got to do is double tap on it. But I do want to show you guys a feature they just added. So if I uh, select one of these codes, all I do is hit the wiring diagram button. I'm going to pick my engine. Now it takes me straight to that component on the wiring diagram. That makes for a fast and easy diagnosis. I can see it looks like I have common power, common ground, and a few signal wires coming out of that. That's the throttle motor control. That way I know uh, I, can, I can really easily and quickly check my power and ground and my connections with the ECM. I already know what all the uh, wire colors are, so that can definitely speed things up for you guys. All right, so let's jump into the uh, engine control module. Just double tap on it. Turn our ignition on, we're good. All right, so the first thing is always going to default you to is straight to the faults page. because That's usually the first thing you want to see is all of your trouble codes. Uh, you guys can see we have a couple different colors here on the left hand side. All right, these yellow codes, that is an inactive fault or a memory fault. Um, the red one, that is an active fault. That means the engine control module sees something wrong right now, and that is an active fault. Just like in the total global scan screen, I can actually highlight one of these codes, hit my wiring diagram button, it will take me right back to the wiring diagram, straight to that component, same place we were before. All right, starting in the left bottom hand side of the screen, we got the print button that just lets us print a report. We got the technical documentation button, and that's the same shortcut we were looking at earlier. So here I can go and see my system sheets, vehicle sheets, and wiring diagrams. That's all the same stuff we were looking at in the previous screen. And you'll notice that button's kind of sprinkled throughout on every screen, so you always have quick and easy access to that tech technical documentation. All right, next button is just a save button if you want to save, uh, save this as a report. And then we have our eraser button or the clear codes button if we want to clear these out. Now, um, Texa works a little bit different when you clear codes. Um, all of these codes, if, they care, if they're able to be cleared, will just turn green. Um, that little icon on the left will turn green, but the codes will stay present on the screen in case, uh, like I know sometimes I've uh, cleared codes a little too quickly, and then um, it kind of made diagnosis a little bit tougher. But this one, if you clear the code, you'll still see it if you need to go back and reference it again. All right, only other buttons we have on this screen are the freeze frame button. So that'll give you all your freeze frame data from when that code was set which can really help you out in the diagnosis. And then we have the, uh, the web button. Now this is iSupport and that's an additional add-on if you guys need additional repair information and help, which can be really useful in getting this stuff diagnosed. 
And then that goes in here, shows you the uh, all the PID, SPN, F FMI numbers. It tells you the symptoms, causes, and potential solutions you need to uh, adjustments or repairs you needed to make to, to get that fault code fixed and cleared. All right, so that about covers everything in the fault screen. Let's go to the parameters or the live data screen. Um, as you guys can see, we have a ton of parameters on this engine. We have 186. And if you're scrolling through here, through a million data PIDs, trying to find something that, like one PID that you need, it can be an absolute pain. So what we can do, instead of scrolling through and looking, so we can use the filters button in here in the bottom left of the screen. So I can search, let's search for, uh, let's see, let's see EGR data. So I can just go in through here, highlight all of the data that I want to see, hit the check mark, and then I'm only going to see that data uh, displayed on the screen for me. Now you notice under the data value that we have two numbers in red and green. That's just our minimum and maximum value. Uh, if you guys want to reset that, you just hit the reset min max button. That's right next to the filters button. Um, next to the reset min max button, we have a just, that's just another shortcut to our technical documentation, same as the other screen. Um, something I do want to show you guys real quick as our favorite data list is the very uh, bottom left button. What we can do here, see we're in live data, I hit the plus button, I can go through here and say I want to save this EGR, EGR data, search EGR, select all the data PIDs I want, hit the check mark, I'm going to name it EGR data, save it. Now that is saved as a favorites data PID list. So that is going to be available on any time, not just on this vehicle, but any time I work on this engine or this vehicle setup, that tab will be available to me. So um, if you're always diagnosing like an EGR issue or an SCR after treatment issue, you can have those favorite data PIDs that you like to see stored in a tab. So it makes it really easy to find the data you want to see very quickly. And of course, in this screen, we can edit, delete, or print the reports um, just like we could from the uh, from the parameter screen. All right, to get rid of our filters, we're just gonna hit the hit the filter button again. Now we're seeing all the data we wanna see again. Um, only other thing I would like to touch on on this one is the dashboard screen. Um, dashboards are just a visual representation of the data. It can help you, it can help, uh, it make a lot more sense to you than just seeing a, just a list of numbers. Um, so now it's put, it's put it in a visual form that can make it a lot easier to understand. See, we have a few different ones here. Our first one is our fuel injection. It can show our fuel rail pressures, our low pressure, side pressure, our high pressure, side pressure. And next screen is going to be uh, the turbocharger, um, an intake system. So it shows our VGT vane position, the desired position, the, our EGR flow, um, desired EGR position and the actual position, all that stuff that can make it easier um, to help you track down an issue. And then finally, we have all of the after treatment data. So this shows all the temperatures and pressures we want to see as well as our dosing rate, stuff like that. So that can help you run down an after treatment issue very easily. All right, the only other thing, uh, we have a wiring diagram uh, shortcut available for a lot of these. If you guys see on the far right hand side of the screen on every data PID, some of them, some of them have this wiring diagram icon. So what you can do is highlight it Hit our wiring diagram button. Again, we got to pick our engine. It takes us straight to that sensor on the wiring diagram. So makes it easy to run down wiring issues for sure. All right, that about covers everything in the parameter screen. Let's jump to ECU info real quick. Uh, not much here to discuss. It's just going to display your VIN number, um, engine serial numbers, calibration IDs, stuff like that. Um, usually if engine operating hours are available, this is where they'll be. So let's move on over to activations. All right, activations are things and tests that you can just turn on and off, but don't stay changed on a permanent basis. So um, your cylinder cutoff test, your compression test, um, your diesel exhaust fluid leak test, all that stuff's gonna live in activations. We got quite a few available on this uh, John Deere 7R series. So just remember, you guys, the difference between activations and settings is activations are just stuff you can actuate on and off um, just for testing purposes. But if we jump over here into settings, now this is stuff that we can actually go in and change on a permanent basis that will stay changed. So if you need to do any resets, uh, initializations, calibrations, uh, if you want to change like speed limiters or idle shutdown timers, PTO configurations, that's all going to be in settings. 
So you can see we got um, your uh, your force regenerations or D DPF replacements will always be in settings. That's the guys you want to see a lot of the time. Um, injector programming will always be in settings. So that's where we're actually programming and coding um, the trim files to for new injectors. And of course the uh, reprogramming for the uh, the variable variable geometry turbos are all in here as well. And if you ever need any more information on what these are and what they do, you can just highlight it, press the help button in the bottom right and see this reset has to be executed only on a new intake air throttle actuator so if you replace that actuator this reset needs to be done all right guys and it is worth noting that the layout and flow of this software is the same no matter what environment you're working in with texa whether it's off highway whether it's truck car uh, marine bike all this the layout and flow the way everything sets in the software is all going to be exactly the same so it's really nice, especially for the guys. I know a lot of guys work on like heavy trucks and off highway equipment. So it's really nice to have a scan tool that you don't have to learn a whole new workflow in. It's all just the same and it flows together and really speeds up your workflow. So you don't have to learn a new tool. All right, guys, I didn't want to get too far into the weeds on this. So just a quick rundown and demo of all the main features and benefits of the Texa diagnostic software. If you guys have any additional questions, please uh, feel free to head on over to our website at ceasusa.com or give us a call at 855-839-2626. We are always happy to take your call, answer your questions. Um, even if you guys need help or diagnostic help uh, fixing a vehicle, please give us a call. We are happy to help you out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.